Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, your one-stop shop for everything motor caravan. I'm at the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show where, as you can see, I've got a fantastic view of everything that's going on. Now we're going to be bringing you some new reviews, some hot accessories, plus much, much more. That's all coming up. But in the meantime, I have to figure out how to get down from up here. Now when it comes to finding the vans that are best in show, I reckon the Eldis AutoQuest 195 is a real contender. But rather than just rattle off some details about what's going on inside and outside, I want to look at it in a series of USPs. The first one of those is the fact that this van is made from solid construction, which is strong, light and dry, glued, not screwed. Now we don't usually wax lyrical about these kinds of things, but in our annual Owner Satisfaction Awards, this body shell construction has definitely been one of the most popular and highly regarded amongst our readers. Now this van will be very interesting for anybody considering crossing over from a touring caravan because there are lots of familiarities in this particular floor plan. USP1. Now I mentioned about the touring caravan and how's this for a caravan style lounge? Parallel seating, a window on either side, extremely sociable for people that like that kind of layout. But you're probably thinking if you have a parallel lounge there are no travel seats. Wrong. There is no forward facing Dinette seat but there are a pair of travel seats in these seat boxes as I will demonstrate. How's that? Two places to sit, and most importantly of all, you don't have to sit together. Now, if I was taking my children out, this would be the way I'd be going. USP3, we have a very good kitchen here in the middle of the van. It's well equipped with a dual fuel fridge, three gas burners, a deep sink, and good storage above. Now, the great thing is there's enough room to pass from the front to the back of the van. As you can see, it's pretty good and very spacious. And USB 4, we have a very sociable rear lounge, another caravan staple. Now the end lounge are the main sleeping quarters, of course. You can use the parallel lounge sofas as twin beds, or you can make up the whole caboodle into a massive double, which is six feet, nine inches long. Fantastic. And don't forget up front in the parallel lounge, there are another two sleeping places, so four in total. The all-in-one offside washroom is of the space-saving variety, so everything has a multi-function, but that's pretty cool. You still get a vanity unit and a shower compartment, but perhaps the best thing of all is that this washroom is in the middle of the van, so it won't disturb people from either end using the washroom in the middle of the night. The Aldis AutoQuest 195 is based on the Peugeot Boxer. It has a 2.2 litre engine producing 130 bhp. It has a 3,500 kilogram chassis and a very decent payload, well over 600 kilograms. Now it is 7.3 metres long, so you'll need a reasonable driveway to park it on. But if you look at it centimetre for centimetre, metre for metre, this van is cracking value for money and I think could definitely be one of the best ones in show. Auto Sleepers has added a new strand to its Peugeot Boxer range of coach belts. The new Corinium brings the added width that is hitherto found on the Mercedes Sprinter based conversions, so you get a much wider feel in the lounge inside and a greater feeling of space overall. And just look how wide it is in here. Unbelievable. I can stretch my arms out and I'm still not touching the sides. Now, this lounge is fantastic. Parallel sofas on either side so you can look at each other, windows, skylights, roof lights, and there's more than enough room to swing the proverbial cat assuming you are feline like bringing them along with you of course. Now some manufacturers talk about cabinet work. Auto sleepers on the other hand talk about cabinetry. Now what do I mean by that? Well the quality speaks for itself. Just look at this, so well put together, beautiful action on those doors and if you open up this one you get the auto sleepers staple, something they provided to their customers for years, the cut glass crystal glasses. The galley is a fantastic place from which to host parties because there are no end of space saving innovations. Just look at this drainer incorporated into the sink lid, this compact but deep sink and you get all this equipment that cooks particularly love. Dual fuel fridge, separate freezer, microwave oven and just to prove that there's substance to go with the style, how's this for an ingenious storage solution? You open this door here and up comes your lounge table.
Now how's this for a comfortable boudoir? You can really see that the width of the van gives a great gangway here to and from the washroom and around the bed. All very good. A very good melange of colours I must say so myself and no end of storage solutions, a double wardrobe no less. And aesthetically they've picked up some of the colours on the headboard in the pelmets above the curtains which are brown and frame the windows very nicely. In actual fact the whole ambience in here is extremely pleasing so if you just excuse me I think I'm going to have a little lie down. It's 7.7 .7 metres long, this van gives you the benefit of a full width end washroom and quite an achievement it is too. The design is fairly sparse but very contemporary. Look at this plastic bowl here to wash in for example. The shower compartment is particularly good too, it's a really good size to it and one thing I think I like more than anything else about it, instead of that silly soap dish that they give you, look at this racking so you can actually get lotions, potions, shower gels and shampoos exactly where you need them, not on the floor but close at hand. The Carinium FB comes with a 150 bhp version of the 2.2 litre Peugeot Boxer engine, so there's plenty of power for a vehicle of this size. You also get a colour reversing camera, cruise control, cab air conditioning and a DAB radio. This Carinium FB will cost you just under £65,000 on the road. It comes on a 3,500 kg chassis, but you can have a 4,000 kg one as a cost option. Now Carinium is the ancient name for Siren Sester and it was famous for being the second largest Roman city in England at the time. Its city walls were built in the second century AD and certainly had to stand up to the ravages of time. And perhaps this auto sleeper with its GRP face side walls and its great reputation for build quality could be around for a great few years yet. Well, I was having a nice rest in there, but I guess I better get out and do some work. No, this isn't some kind of weird new caravan with no windows. It's a Venture trailer, part of a range. I think they're really great. If you've got a motorhome and you need to carry more stuff than you've got space for inside, look, there's loads of luggage accommodation in there. There's more in here in the nose cone. And if you've got bikes, you can get a bike rack. You can even get a roof rack, onto which you could, of course, attach a roof box to carry even more stuff. Hey, you know that trailer we just looked at? Imagine if you'd got one, but you didn't have anything to put in it. I've got a great idea. You could put this in it, a sailing dinghy. Fantastic. But it won't fit, I hear you say. Oh yes it will, you hear me say, because look, here it is, this boat goes into this bag. And the wonders don't end there, inside this bag is this boat. It's unbelievable, how do they do it? It gets even better, step over here. You've seen old fashioned Welsh type coracles floating around on the Severn. They look just like this. It's beautifully made, real wood and real, well, kind of rubbery, plasticky stuff, but it feels great. It looks fantastic, but the amazing thing is this. When it's all packed up, this boat looks like this, which I think is incredible. All these three boats cost between two and three thousand pounds, and if after you've messed around in your motorhome, you like messing around in the water, you can't go wrong. I want one. If you're bored of spending time in your motorhome, and why on earth should you be, I ask, you could try this. <laughs> I've no idea why you would, except for the fact that at night, you've got the most unbelievable view of the stars. And everybody outside has got an incredible view of you. What fun! Luna is a name familiar to many a British motor caravaner. They had an extremely popular model called the Roadstar. They took a little bit of a break from the market, but now they're back with a brand new coach built, the Selina. Now I'm here with Lee from Luna, who's going to tell me a bit about it. So Lee, what's the thinking behind the new model and who are you trying to market it at? 
Well, the thinking is quite just like you said, actually, it's our re-entry back into the motorhome market. We have been back for a couple of years, remember, with the camper car and with the uh, Mercedes-based Landstar range. But this gives us a more mainstream product to go for the coach-built customer that makes up the large majority of the caravan mar motor caravan market in this country. Now, this is a partnership. Can you tell me anything more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, a partnership with a European manufacturer. Uh, what we're using is their engineering and their design expertise. And then we're just putting a bit of a UK spin on the product to market it into the UK. It's a great collaboration between two good companies using our well-known name in the UK market to help them bring product in as well. And the two larger models, the two Forberts, have electrically operated drop-down beds. That's pretty good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a feature that we've seen come into motor caravans in the UK in the last few years. They've always been popular on Europe. Opens up that market to grandparents, extended family use for, for grandchildren, of course, as well as families with uh, younger children as well. Are there any other technical highlights? Uh, technical highlights, the way that these are, these are very well manufactured vehicles. We have a 70 millimetre floor, which is pretty much industry leading standard, and 36 millimetre walls. So they're very, very robust products, very well put together. Combined with just good specification, we've cherry picked the specification to, uh, to appeal to the UK market and of course on the ever popular Peugeot chassis. Do you think buyers are excited about the fact that it's based on a Peugeot Boxer base vehicle? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is well known in the, in the industry. And remember that the Peugeot chassis as well is developed. These chassis are developed to be built as a motorhome, to be converted. Wider wheelbases, the electrics are all compatible with our electrical systems. So that adds a lot of value to it as well. The name is very distinctive. Is there any reason for that? Yeah, it's an astrological term, surprisingly, for lunar caravans. It's, uh, it is actually the uh, mythical star, six degrees north of Sagittarius. I'm surprised you didn't know that now. Why have you done a new Venus model? Exactly the same ethos. It's an entry level product. So the Venus range is priced from £36,000, so which in the in motorhome terms is a, a very, very competitive price. So it's exactly the same ethos. Quite a bit of a lower specification than the Selena, but still adds a very functional motorhome, six metres long, uh, five berths, so appeals to families as well. So you've had three Selenas at the show. How are things going with that? Have you had much interest from buyers? Yeah, we've, uh, we have sold some. We have retailed some, which is nice because it is the first time that these have been seen. Uh, we soft launched it, so we didn't do it to any great fanfare. So people are coming and seeing this, this product for the first time. So it's encouraging that we're seeing sales already. The feedback, particularly from the dealers as well, has been very encouraging. We, we are building our dealer network. We're almost there with that as well. So these will be available to see on forecourts from June. You mentioned you had some other plans for coach built motorhomes. Can you reveal any of them? Up that maybe? Yeah, up at our factory in Preston, we are, we are currently building the prototypes of our own coach built product that we're building ourselves, and that's going into full production in the summer to be launched here at the October show 2017. That's um, a more of a luxury motorhome, so sort of top price end, built on the Renault Master chassis as well, which will give it another little kind of USP for Luna. It will be on its own fairly unique, uh, whereas Peugeot and Fiat are more widely used. It all sounds very good, Lee, and at danger of paraphrasing, take that. It sounds like Luna are back for good in the coach-built moto market. Is that true? <laughs> Without a doubt, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's a growing area of the industry at the moment. Motorhome sales are up on, are, are showing a very good signs of growth at the moment. Not just here, but also in, uh, in Europe. And we currently do export to Europe, and it's also part of our plans going forward for expansion for Luna Caravans. Awesome. Thanks very much. So let's have a look at the Selena 690B, a six-berth overcab coach built. Selena is a collaboration with a European motorhome manufacturer, and there are certainly some clues to those origins inside. It's very continental in feel. Look at these overhead lockers, for example, these contrasting panels inset against the normal wood grain. There are also some thoughtful design touches, like storage just under these lockers, where you can keep things you need close at hand. And above the lockers, there are these restrainers, so you can put everyday items, bits of crockery, where you can see them and retrieve them easily. Very thoughtful indeed. Now also for the British buyers, this lounge has a very wide open feel, which is fantastic, because let's face it, we spend a lot of time sitting in our vehicles rather than outside them. The full dinette also makes up into a double bed, and another spacious double is in the overcab section right behind me. You just pull down on the top, and hey presto, sleeping quarters. Now the kitchen is compact, but it certainly has lots of storage space. You have two overhead lockers, and the fact that there isn't an oven under the sink or cooker unit means that there's loads of space down there too. You also get a couple of drawers. And just in case you're wondering, there is an oven and grill just next to the galley here on the right, and under that, a fridge with a separate freezer compartment, essential for the family on tour. Every self-respecting family tourer needs plenty of places to sleep, and this van has a pair of transverse bunks along the rear. 
The clever thing is, is that one of the bottom actually lifts up. So you can load items from both sides of the vehicle. Because of the windows on the back, you can't have a bike rack, but the fact that they've lined this boot space with checker plate means you can fit all your bulky touring items in here. Very clever indeed. Now how about the washroom? Let's check that out. The near side midships washroom makes good use of the space and it's good to see that the shower compartment is lined with plastic instead of wallboard. You also get a swivel loo, a vanity unit in the corner with a mirror and up above that a cupboard space. The Salina 690B is a very capable six berth coach built family motorhome and what's also attractive is the price, it's just under £46,000. Based on the Peugeot Boxer, the MTPLM is 3,500 kilograms, so anyone in the family can drive it, and the payload is just over 500 kilograms too, so plenty of room for all your kit and caboodle. This could be, with the other two models, a very welcome return to the coach built market for Luna. At a show like this, you expect to see tents, caravans, and of course, motorhomes. But what you don't expect to see is a penny farthing and a man in Edwardian dress pushing it. Mr. Phoebus, tell Good me, afternoon, Andy. what's going on? Well, this bike is a penny farthing, or ordinaries as they were called. How old is it? They were last seen about, what, 1900 and something? Well, this like bike's that. four years old. Four? I know. They're still making them? Absolutely. Out in Alameda, just outside California. California? Yeah, of all places. The home of Tesla motor car. That's the one. That is yeah. unbelievable. And this bike has taken about seven months to build. That is a beautiful... even more unbelievable. <laughs> You actually sell them, do you? I ride them, and we have events all over the country where we, we have people ride them, like it's your good self, Andy. Incredible. Well, I was going to ask, can I have a go? I can't let you have a go on oh, here, but please. let's get you up on I it, Andy. I can't have a go. Well, let's get you up on it. Oh, all right. That's Come on. Better than nothing, I suppose. <laughs> it is, uh, it's okay, it's safe, is it? It is, it's absolutely safe. I am a keen cyclist, so it shouldn't be too well, you difficult. Should be. You look fit as a fiddle. I am as fit so, as a fiddle. So Are grab hold of the handlebars. Right. And then say a few prayers. Right. And then up you get. One, two, three. Go for it. Oh, that's easy. Oh. Oh, you look at home on top. I feel very at home. I haven't got a hat though. I need a hat. Can there I you go. You Just to top it off, Andy. That's, uh, this is the way to go, isn't it? I Are cycle a lot round London and I can just I can just see myself on this. Here we go. Yeah, okay. La, da, 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 da. It's a doddle. But it's a bit scary as well. I think, yeah, I think, I think we'll maybe get I you down. get off now. Okay, okay so this Here's leg. Here's your hat. Thank you. Um, this leg back. Okay, yes. Onto that pin. Onto that pin there. And then just lower yourself uh, down. Oh, so that gentle. It's <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Very good. How well, much? You're looking at about three and a half thousand pounds. Oh my goodness. We have to ask the wife about that. Okay, well, you ask her and I'll be on the end of the phone. But you give lessons as well, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. all over the country. That is, that is amazing, thank you so Good much. Good to see you, adios. <laughs> now when you go to France to get your motorhome converted to all wheel drive, you should nip into the Dordogne, where they've got all kinds of good things going on. Millions of years ago, well actually a few thousand years ago, they had Stone Age people living there in the caves at Lascaux. And in fact, there are still some left. They've also got walnuts, saucisson, and of course, oh, <laughs> wine. Merci, madame. This is the caravan camping and motorhome show, but with all this camping lot, I was feeling a little tense. <laughs> but this is a massive tent. It's a bell tent. I think it's what's known as glamping. And you know something, I can see the attraction. If it's all right with you, I'm just gonna have a little nap. Yeah. Are you bored with going to the same old campsites, schlepping up and down motorways and A roads? It's really boring, isn't it? You want to go somewhere exciting, somewhere rugged, where the roads are made of gravel and sand and there are wild animals all over the place. You want a motorhome like this. Look at it. It's got sand tracks. It's got a big shovel up there. It's got loads of lights and jerry cans. It's even got a winch so that you can pull yourself out of trouble if you get into it. Now, I mean, the bad news is that this is only a concept vehicle. You can't actually order one. 
But the good news is, if you have a two-wheel drive Fiat Ducato, you can take it over to France, and there are several companies over there who will convert it to all-wheel drive, which is amazing. Now then, what about the inside? Well, it's a little bit utilitarian, nothing fancy. Everything's there, of course, shower, cooker, and a bed, etc., etc. But it's designed for adventurous people, going to rugged and tough places. People just like me. Like, for example, a few weeks ago, I was in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It was minus 20 degrees. The snow was up to here, and I was freezing to death, but I was having a great time. However, if I'd had something like this from a company called Sopler, I'd have been a lot more comfortable in my little Winnebago. Sopler is a big name in France. Not very well known over here at all, but apparently, it's the best kind of insulation you can get, and it jolly well should be as well, because it's very, very expensive. But I'm gonna be going to the Grand Canyon again soon to test it out. Feinsberg is the budget brand of German behemoth Canals. They're a great proposition for people shopping for a German-built motorhome, but don't wanna to spend too much cash. But how budget are they? Let's find out. Now this fetching leather steering wheel and gear shift ensemble isn't something you see in most budget vans. You can thank the exclusive importer, Premium Motorhomes of Doncaster for that. They've worked very hard on specking these vans up for UK buyers. So you can expect to see a couple of features like this, including chrome rings around the speedometer dials. A very nice touch indeed. Now this dinette is a very agreeable space. It looks very comfortable and I really like these fabrics. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice the sewn-in tabs in the upholstery. Now that's another thing you don't really see in a budget van. You also get this high security door lock. The kitchen is pretty compact, but the spec is good. You get three gas burners, a sink, an awesome cutlery drawer. There's no oven and grill though, but the dealer will put one in for you if that's what you want. You will lose one of the covers underneath. And there's also a skinny fridge. Bang on trend for the 2016 season. And don't forget, if you need more preparation space, there's a tip-up flap at the end of the worktop. The washroom is very classy. It's got one of those sliding sink things to maximize space in the shower. Elsewhere, you'll find a swivel loo, a vanity unit, and two mirrors. This 600 MEG model has the on-trend twin fixed single beds at the rear. The chief advantage being you can get to the washroom in the middle of the night without disturbing your partner. I think the ambience here is spot on, and there's also a couple of ingenious storage solutions, one in a hinge flap in the floor, and another in the overhead lockers position. Another storage solution is this garage, which can be accessed from both sides of the vehicle. And on the other side, something that betrays the DNA of the mother brand, the ingenious service hatch that groups the hookup and the water connections all in one easy to get to place. The Vinesburg Cara Compact 600 MEG starts from 42,000 pounds. This show van is just over 46 because it has a few bells and whistles added. For a budget van, it looks like great value for money and it doesn't feel particularly budget to me. Now that's all the good news. The bad news is, if you want one of these babies, the 2016 production has sold out, so you're gonna have to wait until next year. Tribute has expanded its range of panel van conversions. There are now three to choose from, two at six meters, and this new one at 6.36. Now, as we all know, Tribute is an affordable entry-level range of motorhomes, but how affordable is it? Are they gonna be cutting a few corners on the inside, or is it gonna be an absolute palace on wheels? Let's find out. The 680 features a half dinette at the front and a couple of beds at the back. I don't think it's particularly budget inside. Look at those lockers, the beautiful contours. This nice classy feel to the tabletop here. These captain's chairs upholstered in the same as the rest of the dinette. It all makes for a very agreeable space. Now it's a camper style kitchen, but you still get all the essentials. A sink, two gas burners, combination oven and grill, and a dual fuel fridge, which is mounted very high up and so very easy to load and unload. And turning over here, there's a very natty control panel, which brings everything together in one place. And next to that, you'll find the controls for the Truma Combi heating, which can also be powered by the amazing iNet system. The sleeping accommodation features the twin single beds layout, which is the bang on trend floor plan. It allows two people to share the same space, but to have perfect access to the washroom in the middle of the van. You also get this very pleasing overlocker ambient lighting solution, which again, doesn't feel particularly budget, so good points there. Now this van is a prototype, so it's not quite the finished article. We've been told that these beds will be stripped down slightly, so they'll be slightly more narrow on the mattress. No problem at all, it will increase the space that you have in the gangway. 
There's also storage underneath. You just pull it up and it's very easy to do so. And hey presto, you have a storage place to put some valuables and keep things out of sight. Very useful indeed. There's also one on the other side. Same process, lift up, another cubby and more storage. But you also get four overhead lockers and added to that a false floor so you can load long items from the back of the van all the way to the front. And down here there's even a couple of drawers and even more cubbies. So storage wise, they've literally thought of everything. The washroom is a shared space. By that I mean that the loo floor is actually the shower tray as well. Another thing of interest is that you can move the vanity unit basin by sliding it along out of the way to increase standing space in the shower. Clever use of the space involved. You also get a mirror and storage solutions. And don't forget a window on the side of the van that is actually opaque to spare your blushes. Cab-wise, it's everything you'd expect from the Fiat Ducato. Six-speed manual gearbox and the standard engine is 130 bhp. You can upgrade it to the 150 bhp unit for a cost option upgrade. Now this test van has the driver's pack fitted, which adds a load of bells and whistles to the standard specification. Things we particularly like are the steering wheel mounted controls, cruise control, cab air conditioning, and ESC and traction control. A few driver aids like that, which seem very good value for £1,500. The 680 will cost you £38,500 on the road. Add in the driver's pack and you'll be spending £40,000, which in itself does not seem like a massive amount of money for this van. At 6.36 metres long, you'll need a reasonable driveway to park it, but at 3,500 kilograms, anyone can drive this van on a standard car licence. There's a lot going for it. We really like the layout, the fit and finish looks good, it doesn't feel particularly budget, and the price is certainly very attractive. From the control panel to the rest of the sharp-looking interior, you can say it's a tribute to the great Italian design. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this show, and indeed for this show. But don't forget, now that we're weekly, you only have to wait a few extra days to get your next fix of motor caravan goodness. In the meantime, you can catch up with us on our website, Facebook and Twitter. But until we meet again, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.